Hey once of all and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be heavily inspired by the poster of the movie Cordelia that dropped on Twitter and made my timeline horny for about two hours. If you are not on Twitter, you're a lucky lucky person but you probably have not seen this. I'm just going to show you the poster. Everyone was screaming about it because it looked like a historical romantic drama with a very dominant woman. But all our hopes and dreams were crushed when someone actually watched the trailer to the movie. It turned out to be just a pedestrian thriller set in modern times. For some reason, the creators of the movie thought that a woman pinning a man to the wall and suggestively biting his neck is scary and not sexy. And I think the women's landed at Twitter did not share the same opinion. Now, a week previous to this, I was researching for another video and looking for some historical romances to read. And I stumbled upon Eva Lee and her new book, What I Like to the Duke. She tweeted a very short but a very effective pitch. She said, this is a novel about a submissive duke and a very dominant female character. So after seeing the poster for Cordelia, I immediately thought about would I like to the Duke? So you might say this poster inspired me. I don't know anything else about the book itself. I'm just going to read it and see if I'm going to like it. And if what's promised in the pitch is fulfilled. Something that I really didn't expect is happening right now. I'm really enjoying an MF historical romance, especially with my previous history with historical romances. I've enjoyed them in the past, reread them recently, and was very disappointed because a lot of them had issues with consent. I'm very surprised how much I'm liking this one. Of course, it helps that it was written recently, and the women's genre went through a huge transformation in the past 30 40 years. Still, I didn't expect to enjoy the first book I picked up. Let let me tell you a little bit about the plot and then we'll get to the most interesting part. Is the Duke submissive? I know that it's the only thing you care about. It's almost the only thing I care about too. So this book follows two characters. The first one is Noel. He is a Duke and the first scene that we have with him is when he's still a teenage boy. And we're introduced to him as a pretty capricious stock up here to the dukedom. And we also introduced to his friends that are pegging him down a notch and are balancing him out. He then very early into the adulthood inherits his title and becomes one of the youngest dukes. He's very wealthy and famous for being awake, but he also cares about businesses that he invests in because he wants them to be ethical. This is actually the discussion that I really appreciated because in a lot of historical romances, especially the ones that I've read in the past, the older romances, were never quite told how the gentry acquired their wealth. And usually we're talking about England, it's through owning plantations. He plans to go to this business event called Bazaar where small businesses or businesses that need money pitch themselves and get investors. So he goes to that event every year to choose which businesses he wants to invest money in. The second character is Jess. She's working for a rich lady as a housekeeper slash maid servant. She's very organized, she likes everything to be in its place and maybe also point out that she's pretty controlling. So this is a good sign in terms of getting a dom-sub dynamic. Uh, there's more to just, she is uh, the older sister to two younger siblings and their uh, family farm burned down, including the soap business. She wants to restore their family business because it's the only sustainable option for them in the long run and she goes to local shops in London to offer the soup and to get an investment in her business. Of course, our two characters meet and the Duke is charmed by Jess. Nothing really comes out of their meeting, but the Duke makes a point to look for her at social gatherings. He doesn't really know who she is. Jess is reading a lot of newspapers, especially the economist section, and she reads about this event called the Bazaar. It is invitations only, but she still wants to try to sneak in and take her chances. And thanks to Noel, she gets into the Bazaar because he remembers her. But the problem is that for her to get in, she had to pretend to be someone else. So she pretended to be a widow to some provincial baronet that no one ever heard about. And now she has to pretend to be someone else 
and fight her attraction to Noel at the same time because she knows that if she gets into bed with him her secret is going to get out somehow. This novel is very approachable, it's very fun and funny. I already want to recommend it even though I have not finished it yet. I also just love the dynamic between Noel and Jess. They're so witty, the banter is delicious and in regard to the whole sub dom dynamic that we were promised there are some hints. Noel is really waiting on her. He gives her a plate of food, he constantly is trying to please her. They both acknowledge their attraction to each other and she literally says to him, I'm aware that we're both attracted to each other, but I'm going to be the one to decide when we're going to have sex. Power move. We'll see if this dynamic is going to travel to that too, but I'm really hoping that it will. I'm halfway through the book and I also cleaned my bed so I thought it's quite the time to film an update and also show you that I'm not a lazy bum. Anyway, I have a few quotes for you and if they want to convince you to pick up this book, I don't know what will, honestly. So, there are more and more indications that it's going to be a light sub dom relationship. I'm not expecting any whips and chains, but the dynamic is so delicious. So, let me read you something. She glanced down at where his knees met the stone floor. You don't have to kneel at my feet. His voice was deep and gravely, even to his own ears. Perhaps I want to be on my knees before you. Okay, next. More, he growled. Give me more commands. Ever since she'd verbally sparred with him the first day of the bazaar, she had been the one in control. Having had a taste of bending to her mastery, he wanted to serve her forever, binding himself to her will so that he lived only to give her pleasure. We stand that for them. Honestly, this dynamic in a historical romance is something I did not expect to see and is something that is very thrilling and exciting for me. The other thing that I want to point out is that men and historicals finally learn how to give a woman an orgasm without doing the whole P and we thing. And it is quite a progress. I am now at the moment in the book where Jess convinced everyone at the bazaar that they need to look into the soap making business that she pretends isn't hers. And they collectively decided that they're going to travel to the country and check out this business in person. The problem with that is that she has to pretend that she is not the owner of the business and that she is someone else, basically. And I'm very excited about this scenario because it is probably going to be hilarious and tense, all the things that I like in a book, because her brother and sister have to pretend that they don't know her and also all the villagers in her village have to pretend that they don't know her. And I'm pretty sure someone is going to slip up because that is just the matter of life. I'm excited for the next smutty scene because the only one we've had so far was very thrilling, but I feel like these characters deserve more. Overall, very excited about this dynamic and I'm really, really enjoying the characters. This is a quick check-in to tell you that something gay is happening. I just couldn't leave it without speaking about it. So. The Union of the Reek, which is the name of the series, is basically all the friends that Noel made in school in Eden. Only Noel is gentry in this club, which means that the next books are going to be about the other guys and they are not going to be about dukes. I'm always excited about books that are not about gentry, historical romances and historical fiction in general, because I feel like it's getting very repetitive. Every historical romance book that I see is about gentry. Well, most of the historical romances that I see are about gentry. And I think we are overall a bit tired of that. I don't want to say let's not write books about gentry ever again. I just want a bit of variety. Anyway, back to the gay stuff. A very interesting dynamic jumped out at me. Basically, two of Noel's friends, Curtis and Roe, are showing signs of being into each other. The guests of the bazaar come to Noel's estate to stay on their journey to Jess's village. The Union of the Rakes arrives to... They literally just wanted to see Noel. Jess meets them. It's very cute. I love the gang. But she notices that Curtis and Roe are giving each other eyes. 
and she kind of wonders if there is something between them. And then, because there are so many guests in the estate, they don't have many bedrooms left, two of the guests have to stay together in one room. And Rose says that he'd be okay with staying with Curtis. Curtis acts very, very suspiciously. He's very silent, he's very much flushed, so... I think there's going to be a book about them, or maybe a novella about them. I would actually want to read that, because I do love queer historical romances, and we all know that. So, my hand is shaking so hard, I'm not sure you can even see me properly. I think something is going to happen in this state with Jess and Noel, because even though Noel gave her a room that is far from his, because it's the prettiest, they must meet in the house at night. It's a genre staple, it has to happen. This is going to be the last update. I've spent most of my day reading this book, and I'm not in the least dissatisfied with it, because it was brilliant, I really, really enjoyed it. While no man was packed in the making of this book, like some of the tweets inquired, this was still a dom sub dynamic, where the dom was a woman. Yes. This book does follow a formula, but it was not annoying, because very often it subverted expectations. Even though I felt like the ending was a bit long, and I knew how it's going to end because of the famous formula, I still liked the epilogue, I was very happy for the couple, and I definitely would pick up an Evelie book in the future. This is it for the video. In the comment section, recommend me some historical romances that you want me to pick up. And on this note, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!